Hello, this is Chris Hammond. I'm here to talk to you about the DNN Task Manager module development series that we're going to be doing here on ChrisDoc.com. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the tutorial series, and then we're going to get started with our .NET Nuke development environment configuration. So this series is going to be a collection of videos, all available for free, as well as tutorial posts on our website, which will show you how to do module development for the DNN platform. It's going to be a series of videos, probably around 15 or 20 videos total. You'll be able to find links to all of those videos once they're complete on our website. We are going to start off setting up our development environment. We're going to have a local .NET Nuke development environment running at dnndev.me. We'll be using the latest version of DNN 7, in this case, as of today, 7.1.2. And we're going to create our modules using ChrisDoc's module development templates. Be able to find a link to those on CodePlex via our tutorials. All the tutorials in this series will be written in C Sharp, but you can also find the Visual Basic.NET source code available for the module as well. We will create two different tutorial paths as we go through this process. The first path we're going to go down is using DAO, the data access layer. That's the data access layer that's been around in .NET Nuke, or DNN, for a number of years. After that, we're going to create a new module with exactly the same functionality, but this time using DAL2, a new feature available to us in DNN 7, which makes our development a little bit quicker, less SQL, less code that needs to be written in order to develop a module. Now you can find all of the source code for the DNN Task Manager module at dnntaskmanager.codeplex.com. You can find a shortcut link here to the DNN 7 source code at cjh.am slash moddevi. That'll just take you to a specific page on the Codeplex project page. Now let's go ahead and get started with our .NET Nuke or DNN module development environment. So we're going to start with the latest version of DNN. We're going to set up an IIS website running locally on our computer at the URL dnndev.me. Ultimately, we're going to use SQL Server 2012 for my local development environment that you can use SQL 2008, 2010, or 2012. You can also use SQL Express if you so desire. We're going to start with the DNN install package and let's go ahead and download that package from CodePlex now. If you go ahead and navigate to .NET Nuke .com and click on the Downloads tab, you'll see a screen that looks similar to this, depending on the version of DNN that you're downloading. We're going to grab the new install package for our development environment. So if you go ahead and click on that link, you'll then be prompted to save that install package. Now, we're not using the source code package, which includes all of the source code for DNN. Now, specifically, the reason we're not using that is we are not developing DNN. We're going to be developing modules or extensions for the platform. So we don't actually need the source of .NET Nuke itself. Now, the next step is to go and find the file that we've downloaded and extract the contents of that zip file. So I have a folder here where I've already downloaded the install package for DNN. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I can right click on that file. And the first thing I want to do before I extract it is I want to right click and choose properties. Within the properties window here, I'm going to click on the unblock option. If we go ahead and click apply, click OK, we've now told Windows that that zip file is safe and we can extract all of the contents for that zip file by right clicking on the file and choosing the extract all option. From here we can go ahead and extract all of the contents of that zip file. Now depending on the speed of your system that might take a few moments to occur. While that's occurring, what we're going to go ahead and do is we want to create a folder where we're going to have the DNN website. I'm going to create a folder in a local folder on my machine on the F drive. I already have a folder there called websites. I'm going to create a specific folder here for my development environment. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to right click inside of that websites folder. I'm going to choose new and I'm going to go ahead and give the folder a name of dnndev.me. Once we've created that folder, we can go ahead and navigate into that folder 
it's a brand new folder so there's nothing in it so the next step now that we have the folder created and we have the zip file extracted we're going to go ahead and take all of the contents of that zip file you can select all of those contents right click choose copy and we're going to go into that dnndev.me folder and choose to paste so this will copy all of the files that are necessary to run our dnn website into that dnndev.me folder once we have the folder populated we can go through the process of creating our website in iis now you can access the website creation tools within windows if you have iis installed you can simply from the start screen type in inet mgr and if you type that in you'll see a screen similar to this here in iis uh, provided with windows 8 i'm going to go ahead and right click on the sites option and i'm going to add a new website the website name is going to be dnndev.me the physical path to that website will be the website's dnndev.me folder that I just configured with the contents of our zip file. And then we're going to provide a host name of dnndev.me. Now that particular URL, dnndev.me, is a domain name that is managed, I believe, by DNN Corporation. And the way it's configured is it points back to a local IP address. So no matter where in the world you try to access that domain name, it will redirect back to 127.0.0.1, your local IP. So that means you can use this domain name on any computer that can host a website. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. That will create a new website here in IIS. We can see the website listed here on the left. And if we go ahead and click on the Application Pools tab on the left, we should see a new application pool called dnndev.me listed there. Now one thing you do want to check is you want to make sure that dnndev.me is running the .NET 4.0 framework. If it is not, choose Properties, and go into the Advanced Settings, and you can change the .NET Framework version. DNN 7 and greater does require .NET 4.0. Now that we've configured the website and the file system, we need to go ahead and assign permissions for the website to that file system folder. We can navigate back to the websites folder. So we can see the dnndev.me folder. We're going to right click on that folder and choose properties. From the Properties window, we're going to choose Security. From the Security window, we're going to click Edit, and then Add. And what we're going to do here is type in the words IIS space APPPOOL, and then backslash dnndev.me. That is the local IIS application pool that was created by our web server when we created the website. If we go ahead and click on check names we'll see it gets underlined here from here we can go ahead and click OK we're gonna go ahead and click modify in the allow column and then we'll simply hit apply and OK in order to define the permissions on that dnndev.me folder now, this is just the first part of our module development environment video check out video number two which will show us how to go through the database creation process for DNN and then we'll step through the installation wizard to get our .NET Nuke website up and running. You can find that video as well as other videos in our DNN Task Manager series in the links below.